The name of this message today is going to be the pornography epidemic, how to overcome this sin. Okay, um, now the word epidemic, if you study it, is a reference to something, a disease that affects a large portion of the population. And of course, when it, it really gets bad, it becomes a pandemic. And I would say pornography today is almost on a pandemic level. Okay, it's just amazing how many people are affected by this. But being a disease, being a sin, um, there's a way that you would handle the thing if you would go to a doctor for some kind of a sickness. Number one, uh, you have to identify the problem. And number two, you have to prescribe the cure. Okay, so I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to ad identify the problem of pornography. I'm going to show you what the Bible has to say about it. And then I'm going to tell you how to fight this sickness. Okay, now this is not a normal sermon. I'm not preaching this in front of our church uh, because it is a very private issue. And I'll say right at the very beginning here that this is something that I have struggled with in my past. And so I am qualified to talk about it. Okay, uh, if you say, well, then that's that's horrible. You've had struggles with pornography in your past, looking at it and things, so I, I can't listen to you. You know, you're you're a false preacher or something. Well, you're going to find out in this study that, uh, in fact, the majority of not only Christians but pastors have admitted to having problems in this area. And I personally know um, most Christian men that I know of are having struggles with pornography. It is an epidemic, uh, especially, uh, and, and even in the, the body of Christ. In the lost world, it's just running rampant. But even in the saved church, it is a big problem. Now, in this study, I am going to be reading some statistics and things, but the majority of this study is going to be scripture. And we're going to go over a lot of verses. And you'll see later that this is actually part of the solution, part of fighting the addiction of pornography, is God's holy word. So, let's get started here. Now, I, as I stated, pornography is an epidemic. And I'm going to read a few statistics here. March 2007, at a small Christian conference in Austria, 75% of the 25 men in attendance admitted to being involved with porn 50% within the past six months. That's a Christian conference, okay? April 6th of 2007, 70% of Christians admitted to struggling with porn in their daily lives from a non-scientific poll taken by uh, something here, XXX Church, as reported by CNN. Uh, August the 7th of 2006, 50% of all Christian men and 20% of all Christian women are addicted to pornography, 50%. Okay, that's what they're admitting to. Okay, and this is 2006. It's five years later. I wonder what it is now. Well, almost five years later from that poll there. Uh, a 1996 Promise Keepers survey at one of their stadium events, and I'm not a fan of Promise Keepers, I just want to say that, revealed that over 50% of the men in attendance were involved with pornography within one week of attending the event. 50%. Uh, another statistic here says out of 81 pastors surveyed, 98% had ex had been exposed to porn, 43% intentionally accessed a sexually explicit website. 98% of the 81 pastors surveyed. Now, I'll read one more statistic here before we continue on. It says, in a survey of over 500 Christian men at a men's retreat, over 90% admitted that they were feeling disconnected, disconnected from God because lust, porn, or fantasy had gained a foothold in their lives. Now, I want you to think about something. It says here 90% of the 500 Christian men admitted to having problems. What about the other 10%? What if there were in that 10% of the men that were left, what if there were men that weren't telling the truth, that were concealing the matter? See, it could very well have been 95, 98%. But just think about something. Out of 500 Christian men, you have 90% saying that they're having problems, that they're struggling with 
basically pornography. Now, if you went to a church that had 500 men going to it and 90% of them had cancer or some other kind of a disease, wouldn't you want to do something about that? I mean, that would be considered a definitely an epidemic and heading towards pandemic. I mean, this is a major, major problem. And most of the, of the statistics are saying right around 70% of professing Christian men are struggling with pornography. That is an epidemic. That's a major, major problem. And you say, well, you know, maybe we should do something. Maybe we should try to pass legislation for pornography to be banned. Well, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I have here a Forbes.com uh, article, and they quote the New York Times Magazine, and it says here, Pornography is big business with $10 billion to $14 billion in annual sales. Uh, that's a lot of money. Let me read a few other quotes here to you. Uh, Comcast, the nation's largest cable company, pulled in $50 million from adult programming. And how much does DirecTV make off of adult uh, products? They estimate as much as $500 million a year that they're making. Okay, in 2006, they estimated the annual income of the pornography industry. And it says here, at $13.3 billion, the 2006 revenues of the pornography industry in the United States are bigger than the NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball combined. Worldwide pornography sales for 2006 are reported to be $97 billion. Okay? Worldwide. See, the $13.3 billion, that's just in America. But worldwide, it's, it's more like $97 billion. To put this in perspective, Microsoft, who sells the operating system used on most of the computers in the world, in addition to other software, reported sales of $44.8 billion in 2006. So the pornography industry is more than twice what Microsoft makes in a year. Um, another quote here, $72 million uh, is the approximate number of visitors, unique visitors, not repeat visitors, unique visitors to adult websites per month in 2006. What is it today? I mean, it's just incredible. That is a, there is a major, major problem worldwide with pornography. And, uh, so you say, well, are they going to ban it? Well, if you know what the Bible says, the answer to that's going to be no. First Timothy chapter six, verses nine and ten says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish, uh, and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay, that's one of the most important verses in the New Testament. The love of money is the root of all evil. And that's absolutely true. You have a $97 billion a year industry. The, the people of this world are not going to shut it down. Pornography is not going to go away. Okay, there's way too much money to be made uh, for for them to ban pornography. That's There's too much money involved. Uh, only when Jesus Christ comes back after the tribulation to set up his millennial reign for the thousand years, that's when pornography is going to have an end. Okay, it, the Bible talks about things that offend and, and, and that will be burned up, essentially, when he comes back. So pornography will have an end, but it's not going to be for a little while yet. Now, the question comes up, is pornography a sin? And, of course, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, to know the answer to that. Yes, it, obviously it's a sin. But let's, you know, go over, again, some scripture here and look at what the Bible has to say about it. Uh, real quick here at a statistic, 38% of adults believe there is nothing wrong with pornography use. So even among the lost world, out there, only 38% would say that there's nothing wrong with pornography. So the majority of people, both saved and lost, would say that, yes, pornography is a sin. They know it's wrong. Uh, I mean, obviously. But uh, part of the thrill, of course, there is that it is a sin, and that's, that's what draws a lot of people to it. 
But what does the Bible have to say about it? Well, we're going to read some scripture here. Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 16. It says here, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, Romans chapter 1 is a great picture of the, sta the steps or the stages that a society will go through, or even a person, even an individual, that they'll go through these stages and they start out good and then they get worse and worse and worse until they're finally destroyed. But see, it starts out there that it's salvation. That's how it starts out. And America started out as a very godly nation. But look what happens next. Verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. There's no one out there that can say that they are truly an atheist, that they don't see any proof at all of God. Uh, there's plenty of proof. Okay, You just look at nature, the complexity of nature, Nobody's going to be without excuse, okay? Verse 21 says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Okay, that's what happens when you deny God. Okay, when you see the complexity of nature, when you see the creation and everything, and you say, you know what, I don't believe in God. You don't give glory to God, and you're not thankful. Okay, all through the New Testament, it talks about being thankful, giving thanks. And we're going to see that a little bit later in this study. But verse 22, this is the next thing that happens. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Uh, yeah, that's right there. When you reject God, when you say, no, I don't believe in God, the Bible says, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Atheism is a system of foolishness. It's a system, and I've had little debates with athe atheists in the past, and it all centers around they don't believe that they are a sinner. They reject the Bible not because of science or other things like that. They reject the Bible because it talks about sin and it talks about judgment. That's why they reject this book. Okay, let's continue on here. Verse 23, it says, And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Now, you see, instead of worshiping God who created nature, they worship nature. They worship man. They put man up on a, on a uh, platform and say, you know, man is the measure of all things, which is ridiculous. But look what happens when that begins to be practiced by the people. Verse 24, Romans chapter 1, verse 24 says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. See, when you reject God, when you don't want God in your life, it starts to become a thing where you will magnify the lusts of your flesh, of your body. Verse 25 who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And that's exactly what they'll do. And there's a lot of false Bible versions out there that do that very thing. They change the truth of God into a lie. They cause the Bible to contradict because they add words and take words out. Okay, that's there's a lot of study on that. But they'll even mess with this verse right here, Romans 1.25. They'll say, exchange the truth of God for a lie. That's not what the Bible says. It says, change the truth of God into a lie. They will actually pervert Scripture. They'll give you false readings of what the Bible is supposed to say. But look what happens next. Okay, they reject God. They're not thankful. They don't give Him glory. They begin to worship nature. And they change God's truth into a lie. What happens next? Verse 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. 
And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Okay, sodomy is not a good thing. Not only is it a sin, but it's also destructive to the flesh. Okay, you can't bear children. You basically sterilize yourself when you are a homosexual, when you are a sodomite, which is the Bible term for a modern homosexual. But see, that's what happens. It begins to become a problem with sex perversion. And God will let them do it. When they aren't thankful, when they don't glorify God, when they change God's truth into a lie, God says, okay, go ahead. You want to have it your way? Go ahead. Look at verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now you see that right there. When you don't like to retain God in your knowledge, God will give you over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And I can guarantee you, any time that you look at pornography, you're not retaining God in your knowledge. Okay, you're saying, don't talk to me, not right now, God. I don't want to pray. I don't want to listen to hymns or spiritual songs. I don't want to read your word. I want to fulfill the lusts of my flesh. That's what happens when you look at pornography. And I'm going to show you how to counter that. Um, but verse 29 here, look what happens when God gives them over to a reprobate mind. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, hmm, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. You say, well, you know, I'm not committing all those things. You know, I, I'm just looking at pornography. It's not, it's not that bad. I'm not actually committing the sin. Well, let's finish the verse here. Verse 32, it says, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. There is a sense in which you are partaking of the sins when you watch fornication, which is any kind of sex outside of marriage. Okay, you have fornication is usually a man and a woman, and sodomy is when you have man and man and woman and woman. And that's the kind of thing that you will start to go for when you, when you start to look at pornography, and there's a sense in which you will be punished for doing for taking pleasure in them that do them. Okay, and I'm going to get into that a little bit more as we continue on here. Uh, Psalm 101 verse 3 says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. You know, it's kind of interesting. When you look at pornography, it will cleave to you. It will stay in your mind. You will remember things that you looked at years and years and years ago. It'll come up in your mind. And you know, you can't live the kind of life that the Lord wants you to live if you have that garbage, that filthy garbage in your mind. So you say, is pornography a sin? Yeah, it is. And I'll tell you something else about pornography. The purpose of pornography, most types of it, it's designed to train you to mentally undress every woman. And if you're a woman, you undress men, you know, of course. But it, it trains you to un mentally undress people when you see them. That's what pornography does to your mind. Now, is that something that the Lord would want for you? I mean, uh, no, of course not. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay, fornication and sodomy are definitely evil. And so are the, the higher levels of pornography, too, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. But you're to abstain from the appearance of the evil. So you can't say, well, it's just, you know, I'm just looking at it, but I'm not actually committing it. No, no, no. It's the appearance of evil that you're supposed to abstain from. There's a very interesting verse back in the book of Numbers, 
Numbers chapter 33 verse 52 says, Then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. Isn't that interesting? God told the Israelites to go in and destroy these heathen people's pictures. And I don't think that the pictures were of sunsets and beautiful mountains, you know, off in the distance and, and wildlife or something. No, I think it was pornographic pictures. You see, lost man has always had a fascination with sex perversion. Okay? So it's not a new thing, this thing of pornography. Second uh, Samuel chapter 11, verse 2. Here's an interesting story. It says, And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now see, David could have made the mistake of just, Oh, oh man, I shouldn't have looked over there. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have looked. Oh, forgive me, Lord. I shouldn't have looked at that thing. I, it wasn't my fault, you know. But he didn't do that. He looked, and instead of looking away, he kept looking. And he began to look and lust, and it consumed him. In verse 3 it says here, And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. And by the way, that's the right way to say it. It's not pregnant. It's with child. It's a little baby in there. But the point is, he saw a woman that was didn't have any clothing on, and instead of looking away, he kept looking, and that lust that he had there turned into sin. Okay? Now, you know, it's not quite the same as pornography, because it's not a picture, but the point is, it, he looked and he lusted. And that's what happens. Okay, him looking at a beautiful woman led to sin. And pornography of any kind will also lead you into sin. Just the way it is. Now, God did forgive David, but it wasn't that God forgave him and then, hey, don't worry about it. There was punishment. The son that was born of that illicit relationship, God killed that son. And I can tell you that God will punish you for looking at pornography. Okay? That's just the way it is. You're not going to get away with it. James chapter 1 verse 13 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Okay? It's your own lust. Now, God will allow you to be tempted at times. We'll see that later in this study. But he is not purposefully trying to send the, the temptation to you so that you will fall, okay? That temptation comes, and God will allow the temptation. And it's not a sin, by the way, to be tempted. That's not a sin. But when it goes from temptation to lust, then it becomes a sin. And look what happens when that lust comes in. Verse 15, James 1.15 then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. That sin will eventually lead to your death. And there are people that get messed up on pornography, and it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, and eventually it leads to their death. They'll commit rape or incest or some other thing, and they get caught and thrown in prison, sometimes executed. Okay, if it gets really bad. Verse 16, James 1.16 says, Do not err, my beloved brethren. <clears throat> now the question comes up, is pornography addiction a flesh problem or a spiritual problem? 
Well, let's look at that. Let's look at what the Bible has to say. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You cannot love this world. Okay, that doesn't mean that you have to be miserable down here. You can enjoy things, but you cannot get caught up in the course of the world. You have to, as a Christian, you have to be separate from the world. You have to be sanctified from the world, separated from the world. You know, if and we're going to see this a little bit later. If you get involved in the world system, it will lead you into the sin of pornography. Okay, when somebody looks at pornography, they are truly lusting after the flesh. It's kind of interesting when you think about that. I mean, if, if, sorry to be graphic here, but if you saw a woman and she didn't have any skin, it was just blood and, and, and muscle, you wouldn't lust after her. What you're lusting after is her flesh. It's kind of weird when you think about that. Romans chapter 7 verse 18 says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. You know, it's kind of interesting because when you read Romans chapter 7, you're reading the words of, of probably the greatest Christian that ever lived, the Apostle Paul. And yet he admits to having struggles with his flesh. There's a lot of people out there that seem to think that when you get saved that your flesh is also saved. Well, that's not true. Your flesh, your soul, and your spirit your soul is redeemed, your spirit is quickened, made alive with the Holy Spirit. But your flesh is not saved. Your flesh is not redeemed at salvation. Your flesh is only redeemed at the rapture. That's when the uh, mortal shall put on immortality. Your flesh is still corruptible. As a Christian, your flesh is capable of all the sins that the lost world can do. Okay, that's why you need to fight against the flesh. You need to do things to keep your flesh down. And we're going to get into that in just a little bit. Okay, your flesh is the main problem. It's, it's the reason why you have problems with pornography. It's the flesh. Okay, you can't blame your pornography problem on the devil or on devils. Some people call them demons. You can't blame that on them. Okay, it's mostly a flesh problem with your own flesh. Now, having said that, I will say this. Can pornography eventually become a spiritual problem? Yes, it can. Okay, Jude verse 1, I'm, I'm sorry, Jude 1 verse 7 through 8 says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Okay, there is a point where it's no longer a normal fleshly desire. Normal fleshly desire will be for a member of the opposite sex. A man will lust after a woman. A woman will lust after a man. That's something that a lot of people have. Well, not a lot of people. Most people have that desire. But when you start to go after strange flesh, when you start to go after members of the same sex, and you start to go after children and even animals, it's starting to head away from flesh and starting to move towards spiritual. Okay, there's, there's some demonic... Uh, presence there. But it's interesting there, it says about the, that these people despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 6 through 10 says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of sodomy. Homosexuality, as it's called now. It wasn't because they were not... Uh, good to the two angels that came or something, you know, they weren't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
they weren't hospitable. I've heard that. You know, the the people from Sodom and Gomorrah, the men from Sodom and Gomorrah, they weren't hospitable. So that's why God destroyed. No, that isn't it. It was the sin of Sodom. The sin of, of Sodom was sodomy, homosexuality. But let's continue it here. Uh, 2 Peter 2, verse 7 says, And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. If you live in certain parts of America here, like San Francisco or, or out in California, I've heard stories, and, and I'm sure that it isn't all bad, you know. but a lot of these big cities, there's sodomites all over the place. And it will be vexing to live around those types of people if you're saved. Okay, Second Peter 2, verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Now, the term government there does refer to the ordained powers that God ordained, lawful good rulers in Romans chapter 13. You read about them. They are lawful. They're not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Okay, when you have tyrants in government, they're not the ones that are ordained of God. Okay, those God will allow them to come to power as a way to punish people, but... Romans chapter 13, in context, is talking about good government. Okay, now it does talk here in Second Peter, it is talking about good political government, but also self-government, being able to keep control of your flesh. And these people who walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, they despise government. They don't want to keep control of their flesh. And that's what is one of the big problems of pornography. Because what you're doing is you are allowing your flesh to look at things and to lust after things that you know are wrong. You know that they're sin. And you despise government. You don't want to govern your own flesh. And there's a lot of people that take it to such an extent that they start to look at child pornography even knowing that it's illegal. And even knowing that the authorities, if the authorities find out, they'll come and they'll arrest you and, and throw you in prison and whatever else. And yet they despise that government. And that's wrong. Now, Leviticus chapter 18 contains a lot of descriptions of sexual type sins. But verse 22, it says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. See, it's not a, just a normal fleshly thing. It's confusion. It's an abomination. There's a spiritual aspect there. You know, yeah, you have people walking in the flesh and, and defiling the flesh. And it's, you know, you don't control your flesh. But then you get into this higher level stuff and it starts to become a spiritual issue. Uh, Leviticus 18:24 says defile not ye yourselves in any of these things for in all these in for in all these the nations are defiled which I which I cast out before you Leviticus chapter 18 verse 24 says defile not ye yourselves in any of these things for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you and the land is defiled therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. That the land spew not you out also, when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. 
Now, you read back through the Old Testament, and you see how God was telling the Israelites to go in and kill people. I mean, just slaughter them. Many times it was just go in and kill all the men. Sometimes it was go in and kill the men, the women, and the children. And even there were times when they killed the animals. And why was it? It was because of sexual sin, sex perversion. And when these people get started out, it's probably just fornication, and then it goes to sodomy, and then it goes to bestiality and pedophilia. And I can tell you right now, when you start out looking at pornography, it will start out very soft core, as they say, and it will go and become hardcore, and you will start getting worse and worse and worse. Okay? That's just the way it is. That's why it's a sin. That's why you have to stay away from it. And, you know, it says there about the, how that God destroyed these heathen nations because of perversion. And I really hate to tell you this, but God is going to destroy America very soon because of the same reason. There's perversion running rampant all over this nation. We are the world's biggest producer of pornography. And God's not going to put up with it very much longer. Okay. Uh, it's also interesting, I want to mention this. Um, and I don't recommend studying Satanism or witchcraft, but in Satanism and witchcraft, most of their rituals are centered around sex perversion. Okay, and, and I have read things from former Satanists, and they say that pornography is a very big thing in the occult. They're very big fans of pornography. So there definitely is a spiritual dimension to pornography. But the biggest struggle is going to be with the flesh. That's going to be the area that you need to overcome. Okay, this, there's a lot of people that try to, oh, there's a, there's a demon of pornographic lust, and if you can just cast him out, then you'll be fine. Well, <laughs> uh, I think you need to take care of your flesh. A lot of these people that talk about casting out devils, uh, they have major problems with their flesh. Um, but let's continue here. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. Here's another thing. It says here, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you are fleshly, if you are carnal, you can't walk with the Lord. You can't serve the Lord. Okay, you, If you're in the flesh, you can't please God. That's what the Bible says there in Romans 8.8. 8. So if Satan wants to attack Christians, what's the best way to do it? The best way to do it is to get Christians to walk in the flesh, to be fleshly, to be carnal, because then they can't please God. So is Satan behind the pornographic movement? Yeah, absolutely. So I think we've seen there that, yes, pornography is a sin. It starts out, as a fleshly thing, and as you move through it, and as you get more and more and more addicted, you want to see it. You need to go to the next level, and it starts to become a spiritual problem at that point. Okay, it's a sin the very first time you look at it, too, by the way. I'm not trying to say that when it starts out, it's not too bad. It does get worse, but it's a sin the very first time you look at it. Even the most, quote-unquote, soft core pornography is a sin. You just don't mess with it. Okay, but uh, let's talk about the cure now. Okay, if you've had trouble with pornographic addiction and you realize that, hey, this is this is making a problem between me and the Lord here. I'm, I can't please God while I'm looking at this filth. What do I do? Well, we're going to talk about the cure for pornography. And you say, okay, what's the cure? What, what do I need to do? What's the cure for pornography? Uh, there isn't any. There is no cure for pornography. Okay, only death will stop you from having temptations and sin. Okay, there is no pill that you can take. There's no shot that you can take. There's no devil that you can cast out, whatever. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be warfare on your own flesh. Uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 23 and 24 says, But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, in his flesh. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? See, Paul realized that his fleshly body was going to keep lusting and, and being tempted to sin. There was no cure that you could just snap your fingers and, wow, I'm not going to sin anymore now. 
No, it's a continual daily process that you have to continue fighting your sin and fighting against your flesh. Okay, so now I want to talk about seven steps that you need to do in your daily life to continually fight against this addiction. Okay, and, and you say, well, when I get to a certain age, I won't be tempted anymore. No, that's not going to happen. I've heard of men in their 70s who are struggling with pornography. Okay, there is no age that you're going to get to. You know, as you get older, yeah, you know, the, the desires aren't there quite as strong. But if you have an addiction to pornography, it's never going to go away. Totally. Okay, you can get victory over that sin. You can keep it subdued. But you're always going to have a temptation there. So it's going to have to be a thing. See, if, if you get a sickness and there's a shot out there that will cure it and you'll never get it again, well, you get the shot and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. But see, with pornography, as long as you're in the flesh, you're going to have that desire there. So we're going to talk about the seven steps to fight the addiction. Step number one is to get saved. Now, I'm saying that because... It could be that somebody who's lost that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. It could be that you've stumbled upon this study and, and you do have a problem with pornography and, and you want to have, you don't want to do it, you don't want to look at it, but you know you don't know where to begin. So I just want to say you need to begin at getting saved. Romans chapter 7 verse 23, we read this just a little bit ago says here, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who shall deliver me? Verse 25 in Romans chapter 7 says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus Christ has to be part of your life if you want to overcome the addiction of pornography. But it continues here, it says, So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. That doesn't mean that Paul is, is saying you can just go on and keep sinning. No, he's just simply saying your mind, your spirit, when you get saved, you serve the Lord. Okay, that's what happens at salvation. But your flesh is still going to be tempted. Your flesh is still going to lust. You are perfectly capable of sinning. Okay, but you say, well, I think I am saved. I think I've accepted Jesus, and I, I, I'm pretty sure. Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Now, what it's saying there is occasionally you need to examine yourself. And I have to say that I've done that with myself a couple times. I say, you know, am I really saved? I mean, you know, what did I pray? When did I pray? Where did I pray? To ask the Lord to, you know, ask God to forgive my sins and, and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. You know, did I ever do that? And I said, yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, I'm saved. You know, you can know that you are saved, but you need to occasionally examine yourself. And see if yes, whether or not you are saved. And if you aren't sure and you don't know and you kind of toss back and forth, the Bible says that you're to know and you won't know if you're a reprobate. So get that thing sorted out. I'm not going to give a salvation message right now in this study for sake of time. But you can go to our website, kjvbbf.com. And we have a, a good salvation video there that you can watch or you can get in contact with us and I'll tell you how to be saved if you don't know for sure. Okay, but you come to God as a sinner. Okay, that's why it's so important to be saved in order to fight this addiction problem. Because you need to realize that you are a sinner, that your flesh, in your flesh dwelleth no good thing. So number one, the first step to fight the addiction is Get saved, make sure you're saved. Okay, that's the very important thing. Number two, the second step to fight the addiction is you need to read a King James Bible. You say, well, what's the deal with the King James Bible? Well, I can spend quite a few hours on this subject. I have a whole other ministry, um, kingjamesvideoministries.com. That's 
uh, my other website, and I have, I think, over a hundred videos there. Uh, some of my own, but then also a lot of other um, people talking about this Bible version issue. And basically, to sum everything up, I mean, you can spend hours and hours and hours on it. The King James Bible comes from the early Christians in Antioch. It can be traced back to that. The new versions, any other Bible except for the King James, including the new King James, it's not an updated King James version, it's a, another corruption, they all can be traced back to the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, Codex B, the Vaticanus manuscript, is the main one that they will use, that they will rely on. And that manuscript comes from the Vatican. I mean, it's in the Vatican's possession. And the new versions, the, the Nestle's Greek text, it's made under Vatican supervision. There's a Jesuit cardinal sitting on the team, the board of editors. So... What I'm saying, the reason I'm saying that is that the foundation of all new versions like the NIV, the New American Standard, the English Standard Version, all of those, uh, they all are based upon the Roman Catholic Church. Now, look at the news. The Roman Catholic Church is probably the most infamous religious system out there that's dealing with sex perversion. Okay, there's pedophilia. There's all kinds of perversion in the Roman Catholic Church. So, and a lot of these new versions, like the NIV, there were two uh, homosexuals on that translation team. Martin Woodstra, the head of the Old Testament translation team, was a homosexual. And one of the NIV stylists, Virginia Mollencott, was a lesbian goddess worshiper. So, and, and you know, there's a lot of other people that are very wicked and corrupt connected to the whole thing. So if you're reading one of the Bibles that they produce, you're not going to get victory over sin. And you say, well, now, come on, Brian, this is, this is kind of radical. Well, I, again, I'm speaking from experience. You see, I used an NIV for 15 years before I started to use the King James Bible. And I can tell you the, the difference that the King James Bible has made in my life has been huge, absolutely huge. Okay, I'm a King James Bible believer. That's what this whole ministry is about. Preaching the Word of God, the King James Bible. So, you know, if you have questions on that, go to kingjamesvideoministries.com. We have lots of free videos there. Get in contact with me. I can send you information. I mean, believe me, I can, I can give you the information on the King James Bible. So, that's very important. But, uh, Psalm 119 verse 9. Okay, you have the King James Bible, now what do you do with it? Psalm 119 verse 9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You can cleanse your way, you can stay away from the addiction of pornography by taking heed to the word of God, reading the word of God. Okay, what you need to do is you need to replace the pornographic images in your mind and the lust that you have you need to replace that with scripture. Be constantly quoting scripture, thinking about it, hiding it in your heart. John chapter 15 verse 3 says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You need to clean up that filthy mind of yours with God's holy word. And again, I speak from experience. I'm not looking down on you and judging you and, and you know, I had problems in my past. Okay, and the way that you clean up your mind is with the Word of God. <clears throat> and I'll show you another verse here. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 27 says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but at the but that it should be holy and without blemish. Uh, if you've looked at pornography for a while, you kind of need to be brainwashed, <laughs> or have your, you know, have your brain washed. Uh, the washing of water by the Word. The Bible is is a type of pure water. It says different places there, and if you fill your mind with Scripture, it's not that. The images will totally disappear and you'll not be able to remember them. But you replace that dirty, the dirty images in your mind with the Word of God 
And that's what will help. And there's nothing else that can do that, by the way. It's only the Word of God. But now, step number one, get saved. Step number two, read the King James Bible. Step number three, and this is the big one, is get control of your flesh. That's the tough one. Okay, this is where the main problem lies. Why men and some women have an addiction to pornography. Romans 8, uh, verse 1 Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. God's not going to judge you if you are walking in the Spirit. But God will have to judge you and punish you if you are walking in the flesh. Okay, that very important to remember. Jump down to verse 5, Romans chapter 8 verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The wages of sin is death. Uh, verse 7, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. We read that verse earlier. The, you can't continue in sin and be pleasing the Lord. And you know that. You know that if you have an addiction to pornography. You know that every time you look at it, you feel disconnected from the Lord. And you know that if you're looking at it and then you're going to church and trying to put on a show, you don't feel, you don't have peace about that. And if you do, you're probably lost. Okay, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Watch out for people saying that you get the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, at some point after salvation. Watch out for that. And saying, oh, I don't have as much of the Holy Spirit today as I did yesterday. Oh, bad news. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you're not saved. Okay, when you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit. All right? And it's just a matter of staying in fellowship with the Lord. That doesn't mean you get more or less of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Now the word there, mortify. The question comes up, how do you mortify the flesh? Well, we're going to see that as we continue on here. That's what's important. That's what you have to get. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. We'll read that quick. This I say then. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now, there's a lot of Christians today that try to mingle the flesh and the Spirit. They try to do things that are carnal. They, they go to churches that have the kind of music that they like, that they prefer. You know, they, they go with new versions that that uh, dumb down the King James Bible, English. And, you know, it's all about what, what makes you feel comfortable. What do you prefer? See, it's all fleshly. What, as a Christian, you don't look and you don't, you don't say, okay, now what do I prefer? You say, okay, what does the Lord prefer? What does the Lord command? And that's how you live. Okay, you don't you don't go around trying to please yourself. Okay, and, and there's a story I heard the one time. There was a guy that had dogs, and, and he'd have them fight. And um, somebody asked him, they said, uh, which dog usually wins? And the guy said, uh, the one that I feed the most. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Which one, which part of you usually wins, the flesh or the spirit? I'm going to give you the answer. The answer is the one that you feed the most. If you feed your flesh 
And we're going to look at how you do that and the the ways to avoid it. But if you feed your flesh all the time, you aren't going to be able to defeat the lust that comes up in you, the desire for pornography. You're not going to be able to defeat it. You need to feed the Spirit and be about the things of the Lord and walking in the Spirit. It says there in verse 16, Galatians 5.16, Walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right there is the answer. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Okay, the first four works of the flesh. If you want to see somebody that's fleshly, that's having a problem with their flesh, that's, that's raising up the flesh, the first four are sexual in nature. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Lasciviousness just means an overindulgence of animal desires, essentially, is what that means. But adultery, fornication, and uncleanness, those are all very prevalent in pornography. Verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, a lot of people say, well, the kingdom of God there is heaven, and so you don't go to heaven if you do any of these things. Uh, well, I'm sorry, but that's not true. And a lot of times you'll get people who, the way that they will try to fight pornography, and the way that they will preach against pornography, is to try and scare it out of people. Well, that's not the right way to do it. And you should never twist scripture to try and prove a point, even if your intentions are good. And the fact of the matter is, the kingdom of God here in Galatians 5.21 is a reference to spiritual communion with God. Okay, being in fellowship with the Lord. And I'm going to prove it to you. Luke chapter 17 verses 20 and 21 says, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. See, it's spiritual fellowship between a saved Christian and the Lord. Okay, that's what it is. Romans 14 verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's spiritual fellowship with the Lord. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, let me ask you a question. When you look at pornography, and you are finished looking at the pornography, do you have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost? No, if you're saved, you feel like a dirty rat. You feel like you just failed the Lord big time. Okay? Been there and done that. All right? And I'm and like I said, I've been clean for a, quite a while now, but I remember. I remember the old ways. I remember how it was. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 will continue on here. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Meekness, temperance, against against such there is no law. Okay? Those fruits of the Spirit need to be in your life. There's nine of them. Okay? They should be manifest in your life. Verse 24, Galatians 5, 24 through 26. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit... Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. If you are Christ, if you are a Christian, you are supposed to crucify your flesh. Now that doesn't mean you have to be like a Catholic and go around and and flagellate yourself, they call it. They take a whip and they'll whip themselves and they'll wear uh, hair shirts and all this bizarre stuff. No, no, no. That's not what it is. It's not a thing about cutting yourself or, or torturing your flesh. No, it's crucifying the flesh in the sense of putting down the flesh, not giving your flesh everything at once, and walking in the Spirit. And those two are contrary, the one to the other, by the way. And you will notice that as a Christian. When you start to try to pray, 
A lot of times, you wait to the very end of the day, and you start falling asleep and everything else. See? Why? The flesh and the spirit are at war. When you want to read the Bible, you go to pick up the Bible, and your mind says, hey, why don't you pick up that catalog instead? Mm -hmm. You get on the internet, and instead of watching or listening to a sermon, you say, I might go to try to see you know, a video or something. Uh-huh. See? Spirit and, and the flesh are contrary, the one to the other. Don't ever think to yourself that you can combine the two. It's not going to happen. And that war is going to be present there from now until you go to be with the Lord, if you're a Christian. Okay, let's continue on here. Romans chapter 6, verse 19 through 23. He says here, Paul writing, he says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Now, let me ask you a question. What possible fruit is there from looking at pornography? What possible gain is there in that? Nothing. It's absolutely carnal. It's absolutely fleshly. There's no profit to pornography. Okay? Just none at all. It's something you just shouldn't mess with. Uh, verse 22. Romans 6.22 says, But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, how can you crucify your flesh? Okay, we saw that. The infirmity of your flesh, the weakness of your flesh. How can you put your flesh down? Well, number one, you need to pray. When you start getting that lust, when you start getting that temptation, don't waste time. Start praying. You know, don't try to, to brave it out and stick it out and prove how big a man you are. No, no, no. Run to God. And pray and say, God, help me not to mess with this stuff. Help me not to lust after this. Help me not to, to look at that. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 through 19 says, Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit. That's what you have to do every time that you want to give in and look at pornography. You have to quench the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is saying, no, 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 don't do that. You know it's wrong. You know it's a sin. And you have to say, yeah, but I just want to go ahead and do it anyhow. See? And the Bible says, quench not the Spirit. Pray without ceasing. Verse 17. Number two, read the Bible. As I said earlier, you need to read the Bible. John 17, verse 17 through 19 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Sanctification is what will set you apart from this world. Okay, that is, you are separating yourself from evil, from sin. And the way that you do it is through the word of God. You need to read the Bible. Number three is listen to spiritual music. I didn't say carnal music. I said spiritual music. Colossians 3, 16 and 17 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Back to reading the Bible. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Now you know that you can't look at pornography in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God for it. You know that. So you can't do it. But see, it says there in verse 16 that you are to uh, listen to hymns and spiritual songs. Uh, Ephesians 5, 19 through 20 says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Try and experiment sometime. The next time you start to desire to look at pornography, 
get some old hymns, old hymns, the hymns there, and play them. And see how long those desires stick around in the flesh. See? But uh, if you want fleshly music, if you want to boost your flesh, if you want to feed your flesh, then the kinds of music that have a very heavy rhythm are rock, rock and roll, rap music, heavy metal, and even a lot of the new country music. A lot of the country music is, you know, country music a lot of times is a lot more filthy than any other type of music out there. Okay, and a lot of the new country is just rock and roll with a steel guitar thrown in or something. I mean, it's it's not something a Christian should be listening to. I've burned there again. I messed around with rock and roll and heavy metal. I've gone to see big rock and roll bands in concert, and I saw that I couldn't please the Lord doing that. Why? Because it was fleshly, and listening to that kind of garbage is going to make it almost impossible for you to fight the addiction of pornography. Okay, and there's a lot of information on the thing of rhythm-based music uplifting the flesh. What you need is you need something that has melody, melody and harmony. Okay, beautiful old hymns. That's the best stuff that you can listen to. Um, July 2005, Family News and Focus said... Uh, there was a study done that said 42% of songs on top 10 CDs in 1999 contained sexual content, 41% of which was considered very explicit. So if you're listening to the popular music of this world, they're going to be talking about sexually perverted types of things. And that's the kind of thing that's going to feed your flesh and it's going to make you start thinking about pornography. Stay away from the popular music. Okay, and a lot of this modern contemporary quote unquote Christian music is they're using the world's style, the world's music, and saying that they're bringing glory to the Lord with it. And again, I was very heavily involved in that. And I can assure you that I couldn't control my flesh at all when I was listening to that type of music. And after I gave it up, after I got away from it, I'm a lot stronger now as a Christian. And you need to get away from that kind of music. It's bad stuff. Uh, number four, you need to get control of your thought life. You know, they say an idle mind is the devil's delight or the devil's workshop or something like this. Well, there's a lot of truth to that. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 through 5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's where temptation starts. It starts up in your mind and you start saying, maybe I ought to, you know, I could just look real quick and I'll just pretend it's for research purposes or something. No, you can't do that. Number five. You need to avoid television and movies from Hollywood. And if you remember earlier, I read Numbers chapter 33, verse 52. Then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. You know what movies used to be called when they first came out? They were called picture shows. You know why? Because that's what they are. They're a bunch, bunch of pictures that are speeded up, played in rapid succession to make a movie. Okay, uh, that's the way it is. Now today, the pictures are moving so quickly with digital technology and all that, that you can't even tell that they're pictures anymore. You can't see the breaks between the pictures. It's just one big image. But uh, you don't have to be too bright to realize that a lot of what's on television and the movie industry is just perverse. And if you think that you can, as a Christian, that you can watch R-rated movies with, you know, quote-unquote mild nudity, whatever that is, you can watch that and overcome the addiction of pornography, you're kidding yourself. It isn't going to happen. Uh, here's another statistic. The average teenager watches between three to four hours of TV a day, and 83% of it contains sexual content. Focus on the family's uh, July 8th of 2005. 83%, and I think it's probably a lot higher today. Okay, that's a, that statistic there is over five years old. 
Uh, Psalm 101, verse 3. We went over this before. I'm going to read this in another verse, and then we'll move to the next point. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. There is a sense in which you need to develop a hatred for fornication and adultery and these wicked people that are destroying Christians. Okay, the pornography industry. You need to have a hatred for that. That doesn't mean you should go and get violent with them, but you ought to have a hatred and, and just hate what they're doing. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. And again, we were over that before, but you have to abstain from it. And, and your flesh, believe me, your flesh is going to try to tell you that it's really not that big of a deal. Everybody else is doing it, you know, and, and so I guess it's not a problem. No. You need to abstain from all appearance of evil. You need to follow what the Bible says. Okay, the number six, the sixth thing that you can do to crucify the flesh is evangelism. Okay, and, and let me, I'll just read this and then I'll make my point. You should be too busy serving the Lord Jesus Christ to have time to look at pornography. Get busy doing the work of the Lord, okay, and make yourself so busy for the work of the Lord that there's just no time to look at pornography. Uh, Ephesians five sixteen through 17 says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You are to understand what the will of the Lord is. If you are saved and you have life, then you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. God has you here for a purpose. He has you there to witness to somebody or to get information out to somebody or whatever. And you are not to be unwise. You are to study and say, God, what is your will for my life? That's something that's important. And let me say this about the evangelism thing. If you have a problem with pornography, okay, if you have an addiction problem there, don't go to some place where there's going to be immodestly dressed women. Don't, I'm going to be brave and I'm going to go out and I'm going to confront the women at some strip club or something. Don't be stupid. Stay away from that stuff. Okay, we're going to get into that in just a minute or two here. But uh, the seventh thing that you can do to crucify your flesh is fasting. And there are other ways, too, to put down your flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. We'll read that quick. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Watch who you keep company with. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Do you go over to your buddy's house and sit around and watch movies? And your buddy's lost? And doesn't have convictions about pornography? What are you doing? You shouldn't be doing that. Verse 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Do you fear God? If you fear God, you will stay away from your buddies, from the old crowd that was there before you got saved. You'll stay away from them. Okay? You have to be separate. See? That's the work of sanctification. And if you're going to just go and, and hang out with your buddies and watch a bunch of R-rated movies or whatever, you're not going to be able to overcome the addiction of pornography. is isn't going to happen. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Okay, God is in you. God is there to help you if you are saved. And you have that as a promise. So you need to cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's in 1 John. Okay? You can be clean. As a Christian, your sins are paid for. They're taken away by the blood of Jesus Christ. That doesn't give you license to continue in sin because then if you live after the flesh, you will die. 
God will have to punish you. But the point is, if you have looked at pornography in your past, if you're struggling with it right now, get it under the blood. Get it forgiven. Confess it to the Lord and just say, I'm filthy, Lord. I need your help. Please forgive me for what I've looked at in the past. Help me to move forward. Help me to live for, for you. Help me to do these things that I'm hearing about here. Praying, reading the Bible, you know, all the things that I've been listing here. That's what you need to do if you want to fight this thing. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You need to get control of your flesh. You need to get control of your body. Okay? You need to realize that every time that you look at pornography, you are sowing seeds of sin in your flesh. And those seeds are going to come up. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. See, when you look at pornography, when you listen to rock music, when you do things that are for the flesh, you are sowing seeds of corruption into your flesh. And you're going to have to reap that someday. But when you read the Bible, when you pray, when you witness, when you study the Word of God, when you listen to spiritual music and hymns, then you are sowing to the Spirit. And you will reap heavenly rewards for that. And it's going to be tough. Okay, You're, It's just going to be war from here on out. You can't give up the fight and just give in and, and let your flesh be destroyed. You can't do that. You have to fight and fight and fight and fight between that Spirit and the flesh and you will reap in due season if you don't faint. Okay? Now moving on to the next point. We have just a few more to go here and then we're done. Point number four. If you have an addiction to pornography, if you're having a hard time with it, avoid secular psychiatric treatment. There are a lot of people out there that are getting rich off of dumb Christians. They're saying, come and you can go through the counseling thing and we can help you out. And I've heard of many cases where men go through counseling and they go through psychiatric treatment and they come out and they're worse off. Okay, Psychiatric treatment was developed by men like Sick Mind Freud, Sigmund Freud, I like to call him Sick Mind, who himself was a sex pervert. Okay, Sick Mind Freud was into this thing of human sexuality and, and all this stuff. That's what he studied. So you're going to go and you get get counseled by methods that were developed by a sex pervert? No, I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> I can guarantee you it's not going to work. Okay, you don't need therapy. You don't need to go and talk out your differences and, you know, sit there and talk through the thing. You don't need to do that. Get it settled between you and the Lord. Okay? Every man's going to give account of himself to God, the Bible teaches. You don't need pills, by the way, either. There's no prescription drug that you can take that will eliminate your desire for pornography. Okay, and if it does, it's going to mess you up somewhere else. Okay, it's going to mess up your mind. It's going to mess up who knows what. Uh, stay away from therapy. Stay away from pills. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Jesus Christ is all you need. One mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Okay, you don't need psychiatric, secular psychiatric treatment. And if your church is doing that kind of thing, they're wrong. Okay, you say, well, my pastor, you know, he, he does therapy and counseling and stuff like that. You don't need him. Okay, your pastor should be pointing you to Jesus Christ and to the Word of God, the King James Bible. And if your pastor's not pointing you to that as the solution, he's got problems. Okay, number five, here's another big one. A number, number five thing or the fifth thing to do to overcome the addiction of pornography. You need to avoid hot spots for pornography and lust. Okay, Proverbs chapter 7 verses 6 through 10 says, 
For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding. He was stupid, in other words. Verse 8, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house, speaking about a prostitute, a harlot, in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. You know, that's when most men have a problem with pornography at night. Hmm, interesting. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. And you go on to read there, we're not going to read it, but you go on to read and he gives in to this woman, to this harlot, and he goes in and commits fornication. And you say, well, what's the story there about? Well, the foolish man is going to go near an area where he knows he's going to be tempted. I'm going to give you a couple examples here in a minute. Let's finish up here. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 24 through 27 says, Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, and go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Don't ever think to yourself that you're strong enough in your own flesh and in your own power to overcome the addiction of pornography. You're not going to be strong enough. Okay? And there have been a lot of great men that have been destroyed by that addiction. And of course by fornication as well. <clears throat> now let's look at a couple points here. You say, well, what's this thing about going into the way and, and you know, being void of understanding and, and going towards temptation. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you really need to check things on the internet at 2 o'clock a.m. in the morning when everybody else is asleep and when you can be alone? Is that really the right time to get on the internet, to get on the computer and start looking things up? Well, what's the solution? You say, well, I got to get on the internet. I got to check my emails and I got to, you know, check business things and whatever and you know, uh -huh. well, what you need to do is find someone you can trust and make them stay right there in the room with you while you're on the Internet. You say, oh, man, I don't know about that. That seems kind of, hey, do you want to stop your problem with pornography? It's going to take radical steps to do that. If you know that there's a problem, you have a problem on the Internet, that temptation is so great that you give into it a lot then you have to do something radical. You have to take radical action. Okay? That's just the way it is. Now, if you're married, I'm talking mostly to single people here with this, what I said before, find someone you can trust. If you're married, then what you should do is you should give your spouse, if you're a man, you give it to your wife. If you're a woman, you give it to your husband. You give them, or you get them to make a password, which only they know. And that only... You should only get on the internet when they're there present with you. Okay? And, you know, you don't have to broadcast to everybody around that you have a problem with pornography. If you're married, you need to keep it between you and your spouse. Okay? Tell them, confess it to them, say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did this thing. I know it's wrong. I know it's a sin. I need your help. Please help me with it. Okay? Don't, I'll just take it on myself and I'll hide it. From, eh, no. If you're married, there's some real big problems there. Okay, now, another problem. Do you really need to go to the magazine section there at your local store, knowing that there's pornography in that magazine section? Well, so you say, what's the solution? I need to get to certain magazine or whatever. Okay, get a subscription. If you want to stay up on local or most recent pickup trucks or hunting or whatever, if it's a fairly innocent magazine, and I'd I don't have any subscriptions to magazines because I'm just not interested. And there's a lot of sexually uh, implicit advertising in magazines. So I usually stay away from magazines. But you say, oh, I really like to have a magazine or something. Well, then get it through a subscription, okay? And if there's a store in your area that does not have pornography, then patronize that store. And if there's stores that do have pornography, don't go to that store and tell them the reason why. Say, hey, I'm not going to shop at your store because you guys carry pornography in, the, in your magazine section and I don't want anything to do with it. Okay, another thing. 
another hot spot for lust and temptation. Do you really need to go to the beach or the swimming pool? You see, if you have a problem, you need to take radical action. As I said before, you have to take action. You have to say, I'm going to stay away from that area. Don't go to some place where there's going to be a lot of flesh present. Okay, take your vacation someplace else. Go skiing. <laughs> you know, there people will be clothed. All right. You need to take serious action if you have a problem here. Okay. It's very important. Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, don't go to psychiatrists, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Stay away from temptation. Okay? And if you really, really, really have a big problem with the internet and looking at things, maybe you want to consider getting rid of the internet. Okay, you have cable TV, you might want to get rid of that. See, it's going to cost you something to serve the Lord. But I highly recommend doing that. All right, number six. Two more points and then we're done. Realize that God will always make a way out of the temptation. Okay, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. 70%, 70 to 90% of professing Christian men are struggling with pornography right now. It's common to man. Okay. You're not born with a desire for alcohol. You're not born with a desire for cigarettes or hard drugs or things like this. But most men and women are born with a desire for relations with the opposite sex. It's there. Okay. God created that into you. So that the human race would continue. Okay, it's there. It's common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able to bear, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. You cannot say that God, he didn't help me. I, I tried and think there's a way to escape. God will make a way to escape from you committing the sin of looking at pornography. It's there. You just have to look for it. If you start feeling a desire, if you start feeling lust building up, if you start letting your mind go and think on things that are, that are wicked, don't get on the computer. Run away from it. Go do something else. Okay? Just run from that stuff. James chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be temp tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Verse 14 and 15 says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. We were already over some of those verses, but the point is, God's not going to send you temptation. When you are tempted, when God allows you to be tempted, he'll make a way to escape it. Okay, and you need to take that route, that way to get out of that temptation. And if you endure those temptations, by the way, the Bible says there that you will be crowned for that. You will receive rewards if you can endure temptation. Okay, and again, like I said earlier, temptation is not a sin. It's only when you act on that temptation that it becomes a sin. Okay, and then finally, number seven, the seventh thing that you need to do to overcome the addiction of pornography is if you've done all these other things and you say, well, Brian, I, I'm i doing this. I pray and I read the Bible and, and, and I witness to people and, and I'm crucifying the flesh. I'm putting down the flesh. I'm listening to the right kind of music and I'm doing everything and yet I'm still having a struggle. Well, the Bible says then that you need to get married. Okay, you have natural desires there. You can't expect to just totally suppress them and they'll go away. If you have those desires, the Bible says you should get married. Let's read here 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. It says, Now concerning the things which he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. 
nevertheless to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Okay, now I just want to say this real quick. Um, some people say that pornography is fornication. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not true. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15 through 20 identifies what fornication is. It says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Joined. That's physical union. Verse 17, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, and ye, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, fornication, the act of fornication is flesh joining flesh. Okay, now, pornography use can lead to fornication. But pornography itself is not fornication. Pornography is lust, it's uncleanness. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. It's what it is. It's not that it's somehow not as not a bad as sin or something. It's still a sin. And it will mess up your mind. Okay, so I'm not trying to justify pornog you know, pornography, but I'm just saying you can't say it's fornication. Because it's not. Fornication is flesh joining flesh. But let's continue here. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse three through five says, Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. It's perfectly okay to have relations as a married couple. The wife hath not power of her own body but the husband, and the likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Satan can actually tempt you, even as a married couple. If one of you is saying, I don't want to have normal relations, Satan can use that to tempt the other member. Okay, now if you are a pervert, if you're having perversion problems and you're looking at pornography as a married couple or as, as and, and you're in, in a marriage and you're wanting your wife to to be like what you're seeing there in pornography, uh, well, you're the one that has a problem. Verse 6, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 7, verse 6 through 9. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment, for I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Stay single. But, verse 9 is key here, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Now the burning there is talking about lust. And if you have had problems with pornography, you know exactly what burning means. Yeah. And if you are doing all the things there where you're praying, you're fasting, you're putting the flesh down, crucifying the flesh, you're reading the King James Bible, and you're doing all these things and you are still having a hard time as a single man or woman, then what you need to do according to the Bible is you need to marry. And that doesn't mean that you should run out and marry the first person who will consent to being your husband or your wife. No, you shouldn't do that. You need to pray. You need to seek the Lord's will in marriage. Don't be hasty in getting married to somebody. That's a big mistake. You don't want to do that. Okay? And, you know, if you're looking at pornography a lot, they're only picking the very most beautiful women for those types of things. If you're a man, and they, they pick real good-looking guys if you're a woman. And don't think to yourself, i got to have that now for me to be married and to be happy in marriage. No. Uh, you don't want to do that. Uh, now, if you're married and you're having normal relations with your husband or your wife, well, you really don't have any excuse for viewing pornography. 
there's no excuse, period, for, for viewing pornography. But the point is, if you're married, like King David was, he had a wife. He had no reason to go after Bathsheba. And if you are married, you have no reason to go after pornography. And so you are going to be held extra accountable for what you're doing. And if you're having a problem, you're going to have to really, really, really work on crucifying the flesh. And I gave you some things that you need to do, uh, a lot of things that you need to start getting straightened out. Um, but one thing I just want to say is don't shame your family by going public with your problem. Okay? It's not going to do anything. All right? You should tell your partner, your spouse, you should tell them what's going on. You should confess it to the Lord. Confess it to your partner. It's not right what you're doing. And, you know, hopefully it won't break up the marriage. But the point is, you have to get the thing settled. You can't continue doing that as a married man or woman. Um, and you're going to have to work extra hard at kicking the pornography addiction. But I just want to leave you here at the end of this study with... One more verse of scripture. As I stated, we went through, you know, I said at the beginning of the study, we're going to go through a lot of scripture, and that's what we did. And that's what you need to do to fight the addiction of pornography. If you're having a hard time, you got to rely on the Word of God. Acts chapter 20, verse 32 says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God. I can't help you, okay? I can't be there and, and help you overcome it. I commend you to God. I give you over to the Lord and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Don't go through your whole life struggling with this addiction. Get this thing settled. You don't want to go to heaven and have that blot on your record. You don't want to get up there and... Realize that you could have done so much more for the Lord if you wouldn't have had this pornography problem. You need to quit looking at that stuff. It is sin. I demonstrated in this study it's sin. It's If you are in the flesh, you can't please God. If you are doing things that are fleshly, you're not going to have fellowship with the Lord. He's going to seem foreign and distant to you. You need to work very, very, very hard at overcoming this addiction. And you can do it. Okay, it's possible to do it. But if you start to slip up and you start to feed the flesh and the flesh starts to get stronger than the spirit, you're going to fall. So listen to this study. Um, do what I'm saying here. Okay, as I said, I had problems in the past and I'm telling you what works. Okay, it's not about psychological treatment or some pill that you can take it's going to take war against your flesh that's the best advice i can give to you so thank you for listening to this study and i pray that you will do the things that i've said in this so that's it thank you